ai farfalloni amoroso, notte giorno di torno girando, delle belle trovando al riposo, ma ci sei tu a tuo cibo d'amore, delle belle trovando al riposo, ma ci sei tu a tuo cibo d'amore. Hey, how you doing? How's it going? Can I shake your hand? Can I show? Oh, maybe not. Social distance. My bad. Anyway, let me know afterwards if everything went all right, okay? And I'm not just saying that. You know, I, uh, I want to know. Good. Oh, here's a quarter. Where did you get that shirt? Where? What's it made of? You know, I, uh, I only wear a blend. 50-50 of cotton and polyester, the best of both worlds. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is she with you? Don't lie to me, yes or no. What is, what is she, your girlfriend or, or second wife or what? <laughs> she is very beautiful. You're as beautiful as roses. Here, smell this and think of me. Watch her. Watch her like a hawk. Or the wise. Man to man. Hey, everybody. My mother's here tonight. That's right. Can I get a round of applause for my mother? Come on. I swear to you. She's the greatest woman in the whole world. Anyway, I'm glad you're all here tonight. Not just because I'm a very social person. I, uh, <laughs> excuse me. I just have to take care of one thing right here. I just saw someone. Just one moment. What are you doing here? Don't look around. Ain't nobody gonna help you with your personal doings. Didn't I tell you to leave me alone? You here to shake me up? It's not gonna happen. Okay, let's go. See the guy in the lobby about your money? He'll give it back, okay? <laughs> you know, some people don't understand a man when he says something the first time and uh, that is not the man's fault. Hey, hey, what do you think? I'm stupid, I can see you. <laughs> Look, I'm working. I got my mother here. You gotta go, okay? Listen, I'll meet you at PJ Clark's 11.15, all right? We'll have a talk. <laughs> you believe that? I think of myself as an experienced man, but uh, women, they still amaze me. You know, some things I just know. In fact, I happen to be a very wise man. A wise guy, if you will. In fact, I came here tonight to teach you something. Think of it that way, you are my class. In class, what I'm gonna do is tell you a story. A story about my friend Huey and me and what happened to him. Now, my name is Aldo Scalicchi and my very best friend in the whole entire world is Huey Maximilian Bonfigliano. Now, about a month ago, I had noticed I had not seen my friend Huey in some time. I tried calling him, but uh, no answer. So naturally, I showed up to his apartment Knock, knock, knock. Oh, is it? It's Aldo. Freaking slicky. I can't talk right now. What's in the box? Music. Music? What for? Because I'm working on something. What are you doing? Writing. Writing? Writing to who? I'm not writing nobody. I'm writing. Writing what? <sighs> something. What is it? I won't name it. <laughs> I reject that. All right. Finished. What'd you finish? This. What is it? <laughs> I will name it. I reject that. All right. Jeez. Do you want to hear it? You want to read it to me? Sure, I want to hear it. <clears throat> when I get tired of being cool, I slam this bat against the back of my skull and curse the stars I see. My heritage is one of rage, like a black blindfold you can sort of see through. I can see my abductors, I can count my abductors, but I cannot identify my abductors. When I sit back and picture something pleasant, I fail completely. There is no inner scene to fall back on, no placid picture vacation, only something broken, primordial, and mine. If I thought writing this made me a poet, I'd stick a fork in my eye and check out poets bite themselves. I want to bite you. Don't try to nail my words. <laughs> what do I mean by bite? Don't you dare try to nail my words. If you nail my words, they'll die. And then you'll completely understand what I said because what I said will be completely dead. 
Uh, may I sit down, Huey? Sure. Refresh me. Uh, what does this primordial mean? Uh, old, like a caveman, kind of. All right. Can I uh, speak with you, Huey? Sure. You know, you ain't been coming around this last long bit. I got a lot on my mind. I've been calling you. I unplugged the phone. Now when I come around here, you're dressed in these ridiculous clothes writing about this primordial shit. Get out. Get out. Get out. Now I can't help but think that what's going on with you is just another expression of your usual problem. Why don't you leave me alone? How long you been divorced now? Three years. <sighs> Three years. Ooh wee. Don't you think don't you think it's about time you get over it? You understand nothing. All right, all right. Look. Maybe I'm willing to listen. Maybe if I don't, if I don't understand some, maybe you can explain it to me. I can't because I don't understand. What is this appearance? Don't talk to me. Tell me about this appearance you're wearing. Well, don't tamper with me while I'm in progress with this, this thing. Don't you look like, you look like a frog. I do not. Yeah, you do. You look like a frog. You look like a, a frog in a pajama top. I have a plan. For what? To get it back. Who? Janice. <laughs> you want her back? Yeah. She shot your dog. <laughs> I don't care anymore. The woman shot your dog with a zip gun, and now you want her back? Yes. Huey, Huey. Why? Love. Love, eh? I'm listening. That's all. What, what is you telling me? You telling me that you love Janice? My life don't mean nothing without her. I can't argue with you there. I don't know whether your life means anything or not. Maybe it doesn't mean anything. I mean, uh, who cares? Why should your life mean anything? Hell, my life doesn't mean anything, that's for sure. Maybe that's the good news. Why do you want your life to mean some? Okay, with you, your life meant some when you was with Janice. That's true, that's true. It meant, it meant heartache, screaming bad food, and finally, a dead dog. Now, Huey, is this something to miss? You know, a lot of people have an expression of this type of problem, you know? They had something horrible for a long, long time. They get rid of it, and they miss it. They want the horrible thing back, but only in the very, very blindest, stupidest way possible. See, uh, this is where your friends come in. Friends are those people appointed in your life to blow the whistle when you're insane. I hadn't seen you for a while. I tried calling you, no answer. Immediately when I thought about it, I figured you was having some kind of mental episode. So I'm your friend. I'm here to do my job, wake up. I got a good plan to get it back. Jeez, you know, talking to you is like being alone. But I need your help. Wait a minute. You want me to help you get Janice back? Yes. Janice hates me. I know that. Once when I was a little kid, Janice made me play funeral with her. She made me lie down in a flower box, cross my arms over my chest and be dead. And she put on a happy birthday hat and blew a party horn. No, well, I absolutely believe that if I died, she'd show up at my coffin with that exact hat on, Huey. You're right. She doesn't like you. She hates me. But she likes you better than me. Although, let me explain what's been going on with me. For three years now, I've been trying to forget Janice and move on with my life. I moved in by myself. I got a nice girlfriend. <laughs> Teresa is a wonderful person. I know she is. Have the guys in this neighborhood are jealous of you over Teresa. No. I know that from the outside, my life is looking pretty good right now. I know that Teresa's great and that she loves me. And she can cook like an angel. Hell, she almost as cooks as good as my mom. I'm just kidding, ma. That's just a rhetorical fib to make a point, my friend, that's all. And uh, on top of that, Teresa is easy going. I know. That's no small thing, you know. I know. No, if I had an easy going girl, I, I might tell her not myself. You, you're never getting married. Well, uh, that's true. But it's not because there's anything wrong with me. It's because it's the state of this country, it's... It's ruined all the girls. Aldo, I'm gonna break it off with Teresa and I'm gonna go after Janice. God, 
you're you're doomed, man. You're you're like you're like Oedipus. I'm talking a freaking Oedipus. I'm doing what a man should do. I've spent a lot of time thinking years, weighing this and this and this. I I haven't wanted to be rash. To tell you the truth, the thing that scared me the most in this whole time in my life is that I would be rash. I haven't been. Nobody could think more about anything than I've thought about this. But a man's heart is hard to know. I mean, his own heart. I've I've spent a lot of time listening to my heart. I've I've taken out my pictures of Janice and looked at them, and I I've put them away again. When I wake up in the morning, I write my dreams down on a little piece of paper, and I read it over and over and over to try to understand what they mean. I save them. I have all my dreams in a drawer. I've spent time with Teresa. I love her. I eat with her. I talk to her about what she thinks life is. In my secret mind, I compare her to Janice. In many ways, she's better than Janice. I mean, like, if you were to put them both on television, I think Teresa would get much better ratings than Janice. You know what happened to me when I was a kid? I got a crush on this girl. I thought she was great. I followed her all over the place, trying to trying to work myself up to ask her to this party. I, I, I told one of the guys on the neighbor, neighborhood when I was thinking, and you know what he did? He laughed at me. He told me I was a fool because she wasn't good looking. And, and you know what I did? I dropped my interest in that girl. I never asked her to that party. She was out of my life picture. I dropped her because the ratings were too low and that was okay because I was a boy, which means that was the time to be stupid. I'm a man now. I can't worry about what my life looks like to other people. You know, the guy that told me the girl wasn't good looking. I can't even remember his name. I'm going to break it off with Teresa and I'm going to go after Janice. <laughs> you think Janice is going to like you better this way than in normal clothes? I'm trying to give myself some confidence. I got no confidence I can straighten out my life. Whoa. Huey, you all right? No. Hey, Huey. I'm a fool, although uh, maybe I've always been a fool. I've screwed up every single thing in my life. I feel this pain in me that makes me weak. The pain is in my place in me where I'm hurt from the divorce. I'm a big freaking failure. I, I got to find a way to make things right. I tried to go into the future and be new, but it don't work for me. All the ghosts of my old happiness come after me when I stop and be still a minute. I, I didn't think I could ever be so regretful. I, I'm a young man, but I feel like everything is over for me if, if I don't go back and fix this broken place. I gotta, I gotta get back with Janice before I start thinking about like, like doing something drastic. Hey, hey, listen, whatever you need, you, you hear me? I'm your friend, Huey, whatever you wanna do, you, you're gonna be all right. Oh, the look at me. What happened to me? I was a young man. I never worried about nothing. Now, I, I can't taste my food. The furniture just sits on my floor here. I got no feeling at home. I tried to cling Teresa. I tried to feel my rights with her. She wanted me to, but I don't, I don't feel like I got that power in me to claim a woman. That, that strength and knowing what I want, I can't take. I, I want my power to stand up and be a man and take. I want it back. I think, I think Janice has it. I, I think she took that power from me or it's sitting with us, something like that. I'm like, like Samson. And Janice is the woman who cut my hair and took my strength. I, I want my strength of being a man back. And I, I got to go to Janice for that. Listen, it, it don't sound to me like you love her. I don't know whether I love her. I don't care whether I love her or not. Love don't matter to me anymore. I've lost my, my, my strength and my freedom of being a man. And without that, there's a lot more than love I can't do. Without that much longer, I ain't, I ain't gonna be able to draw breath. All right then, we'll get that strength back for you, Huey. Listen, I'm your friend. Life is stupid, I know that too. You get, you're gonna have these situations that are stupid to live through and yet it has to be done. You wanna look like this? Go ahead. You need to go back to Janice, go back. We're here now and will be here then. I am not letting you go. You let go of a friend for a minute, he's, he starts to fly away from you a thousand miles an hour. I mean, it's a miracle you ever see him again. I'll hold on to you. So you'll help me? Yes, whatever you need. I have a good plan. Lay it on me. These things gotta be done in a certain order. I'm listening. I gotta break up with Teresa before I can reconcile with Janice. It seems right. Teresa should be working the soup house this afternoon, and I must go there and tell her it's over between us. You want me to come with you? No. Teresa doesn't like you very much. 
How come all the women you like hate me? Maybe because they know you're my friend and they're jealous. No, 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 no. I think it's because they know I won't marry. I think women only like the friends you make after you with them because then they know those friends accept the situation. Old friends want to take you back to the good old days. Nah, I think it's because they know I won't marry. Trust me. They hate my sanity. Anyway, uh, I'm pretty scared to tell Teresa that I don't want to see her anymore. Just yesterday, I told her that I loved her and that I'd really gotten over all my mental problems. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You told her that yesterday? Yeah. How did you have such a quick change of heart? I don't know. Maybe I was lying. I, I don't know what I was thinking. I, I really can't remember yesterday. It really feels like a long time ago. Listen, Huey, maybe you should just hold tight for a few days and then wait to see how you're feeling then? No. Even though I know I don't always feel the same way, the way I'm, I'm feeling now is the biggest thing. It, it comes back and back, and I never solve it. I think I just get tired of it, and then when I rest, it comes back. I really know the solution isn't going this way. I don't, I don't want to go, you know? Why, why do you think I had done this before this? I was too scared. I don't like to make a move like this. It's too big. I think if I could live the way I wanted, everything would be smaller happenings. But, but things are big. I mean... <laughs> Love, marriage, divorce, death, babies. Things are too big for a little guy like me not to be scared. But whether I'm scared or not, I got to try to make things right. And I might as well get on with trying. Listen, something I got to tell you from my side. What? I feel like now is the moment to say something. What about? You should know that I don't always know what I'm doing either. I'm going to tell you some. It's a, little, it's a little hard for me to say. I get scared because of life too. See, uh, when my father died and, and I didn't even know him because he never talked to me seriously, I got hit with the tragic side of being a man. I mean, my own father was a stranger to me, Huey. Can you imagine? Hell, I can't even imagine. And it happened to me. My own father never took me to his side and made me feel like his son. And, and I never grabbed him and made him do that with me. It just didn't happen. Some things just don't happen. The moment goes by. The man is dead now. I can't go back and change that. I got no father. Hell, when I had a father, I didn't have a father. And now I never will. No matter how much I wish and wish. So this is what I'm saying. It's easy for me never to show the truth to another man, just like I was taught. That's why I think I ache for the company of a woman as well. <laughs> now I know there are the other reasons too, but uh, I think it's also harder for me not to show the truth to a woman, you know, uh, sooner or later, once I get to know them. And that's why I, I love them and, and hate them and, and need them to the point where I stare at the ones I don't even know. Then why don't you get married? Because it's a sickness in me that makes me need a woman in that way. It's the sickness of being a man. The stupid son of a stupid father. I got things in me I got to fix between me and men before I even get to the women. Huey, we got to be friends for one another, man. Or, or at least I wish and hope we could be friends like me and my father never could be. This is the moment that's going to tell the tale. I, I can feel it. You know, uh, we've always been close, but we stomp around each other like all the other hot shots. But, but just now, just now you told me how you felt for real about some. In a way that I only thought you could have told a woman. And that, that touches me. That moves me. Marone, I sound like a little girl. No, 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 no. I... I just sound like my father never did. And that's, that's how I want to sound. What are you saying, Aldo? That I love you, man. And I am petrified to say that. All I ever do is mock and march around and try to look good, just like my stupid father. And that's dead. I love you, man to man, and I am here for you. All right? All right. Now tell me what you need from me in this plan. I feel like I should say now that I love you too. No, you don't need to say nothing if you don't want to. 
Would you mind if I didn't? I just don't feel up to that. No, no, I don't mind. Look, Huey, just tell me the plan and let's get going. All right. I go to the soup house and tell Teresa it's over. Right. And then once that's done, uh, I'm done. Whatever. You go and you pave the way for me with Janice. I have several questions. Okay. Why do I get Janice? Uh, because if I go without having to prepare, I think she'll just flip out and start yelling, and then we'll never really have the conversation. If you talk to her first. Oh, she can tear my head off. Right. I mean, exactly. I need my head for this one, although, and you don't. If she screams at me too hard, I, I think I'll get too nervous to talk as good as I could. But why me? Because she respects you. She don't like you, but she respects you. And you're a good talker, a good arguer. You're better than me at talking. It, you're not afraid of her. You can take the heat better than me. But most of all, who else but you? Who else cares to do this but you? What if she shoots me? She ain't gonna shoot you. She shot your dog. That was a dog. You're a human being. But does she know that? She doesn't even have the gun anymore. It, it blew up after that. Whoa, 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 whoa. After that? It was just a crappy zip gun. When was she using the gun after that? What was she shooting at? Me? She shot a gun at you. <laughs> that was back when she was drinking. She's dry now. The woman shot your dog. She tried to shoot you. And now you're sending me to her? All right. I'll do it. Paving the way, huh? Son of a bitch. Although. You know, Huey, if I'm doing this for you, you should definitely tell me that you love me. Hell, you should carve it into a freaking tree. I love you. Don't lie to me. I do love you, Aldo. I don't know. You're going to bust up with Teresa, this terrific girl. And I'm going to prepare Janice for you to stage the disaster of your life. All this in the name of friendship? You know what I think of it as? Like what? Like... Like music, like a like a musical movement. I feel like this will be my first music in a long time. Like music, huh? So what, now you're composer? Is that it? All right. I'm game. I'll be your first movement. But uh, at some point, I'm going to have to sit back with my popcorn, Puccini. This is your show. I know that. Just so long as you know that. All right. Janice should be home by 9 o'clock tonight. She don't work the dinner on Saturday, and I should be all broken up with Teresa by then, so it won't be wrong that way. After you talk Janice to a place where you think she'll actually talk to me, tell her I'll be there at midnight. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Midnight? Ain't that kind of late? She'll be tired. Maybe. Yeah, right. Be bad. Yeah, right. She'll be tired from taking the pot shots at me. The gun blew up. As if that were the only gun to be had. If you don't want to do it, I'll don't just say the word. No, no, no. I'll do it. Thanks. It's all right. Uh, we should get going. I'll go to the soup house and talk to Teresa. You sure you don't want me to come with you? No, I got to do this. All right. Huey? Yeah? Go easy on Teresa. She's a nice girl and don't deserve your grief. I know. I'm scared to tell her. You should be. But don't worry about it. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Aunt May. Why are your eyes red? What are you talking about? All right, fine. Don't tell me. I'm a widow. I got nothing to do with my life if the people I love shut me out, but that's my problem and I'll get by. You got some soup? Sure. You got that minestrone? Every day. I like that minestrone. I used to like minestrone. I used to like walking in the rain. I used to like looking in the mirror. Now all I see there is a moron. You're not a moron, you're a beautiful girl. Now why are your eyes red? I've made up my mind. I'm calling quits with Huey. So, that's it. But I thought you loved Huey. He's very distracted, Aunt May. I feel this constant thing with him where he's comparing me to his old wife. Well, that's no good, that's bad. Yesterday, he told me that he loved me and that he put all his mental problems behind him. Oh, but you didn't believe him. You saw. I could see that he was insane. 
What's the matter with that boy? He can't get over his divorce. Uh-huh. That's bad. I have been so nice to that man. But that's over. He don't know the difference. His old wife. Janice. Yeah, Janice. She treated him like a dog. And now he looks at all women like they're her. I heard she killed his dog. She did that too. It takes a woman with big feelings to kill a man's dog. A real Bloody Mary. Janice is terrible. She scares the living shit out of me. She's like a scourge. She should live on a black mountain and drink out of a skull. The one thing I could never understand was how he came to marry her. Well, maybe she wasn't that way back then. Not that people change, but sometimes some small can get emphasized through a bad experience. Like what? I don't know. Maybe like Mary and Huey. Who knows, maybe if you'd married Huey, you would have gotten to be like Janice. Huh. No way. I don't know. Well, I'm telling you, no way. Well, I'm telling you, I don't know. Well, we're never going to find out who's right, because I'm going to break up with him. How are you going to do it? What do you mean? Well, this is important. You're going to point in his face, or you're going to take all the blame on yourself. And you thought about it. Think about it. You should. What's the difference? If you point the finger at him while he's in front of you, you may not be pointing the finger at him in your sleep. Point the finger in my sleep? That's right. You mean if I'm not careful, I could get obsessed? That's right. You could get that whole bug-eyed look. I don't want that. So I'll point in his face, and then he can remember my finger pointing at him like a knife, and then I'll go and sleep good. Yeah. You'll still feel pain. Aunt May? Yeah? I feel too weak to break up with Huey. I don't feel like I got the strength to just push him away. You're only weak when you try to do something you don't want to. I want to break up with him. When you do what you want, you're strong as an ox. I've lost all my reasons for us to be together. You're tormented. I am. You want to break up with him and you don't want to break up with him. No, I want to break up with him. You do? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Why? I don't like how he's treating me. You feel bad? Yes. It used to be better? Much better. Then I guess you're right to do something to get things moving. In the beginning, he was like this guy who loved me, and he had no past with anybody. It was like he was just starting out to live. And then the past came and got him and threw a bag over him. The man was kidnapped by his own past. He's supposed to come by. Where? Here. He said he'd be by. Then I'd best be on my way. No, I want you to be here. No, you don't. What do you want me for? I want you here so you can hear what I say and what he says and tell me afterwards that I don't remember anything wrong. I make a bad witness. I don't retain. I, I want your moral support. I don't have no morals. Well, just stay, okay? I'm gonna be sad. I don't wanna be alone. All right, I'll stay. God, you're pretty. I'll never understand why pretty girls always seem to get treated so bad. Or ugly girls either. Here he comes. Remember, point the finger. Save your peace of mind. Hi. Hi. Hi, it's May. You look like the Count of Monte Cristo. Thanks. So, uh, how are you today, Huey? Good. How are you today? Good. I'm gonna go wash my bowl. You look awful. You look beautiful. Thank you. Uh, Huey? Janice. What did you call me? Ja Teresa. You called me Janice. Oh boy. No, I didn't. You called me Janice, you piece of shit. I didn't say that. Oh, I knew this was the way your mind was working. I am not your old wife. I know that. Oh, I feel sick. I know who you are. You're, you're Teresa. Oh, very good. Aunt May, isn't that great? He knows my name. I should have left when I had the chance. Janice was one person, and I am another person. I know that. Oof. 
You treat me like a criminal because this other woman gave you abuse. I do not treat you like a criminal. You, uh, you, I have been loving you and you've been treating me like you've the right to what I'm giving you. You've been treating my affection like some kind of torture you've been putting up with. Like we was in the last days of a bad marriage. I have not. You've been completely misunderstanding everything I've been going through. I understand everything, you, you lousy geep. I've got x-ray understanding. You know what the problem with you is? You're spoiled by women. You think you got women love coming out of your destiny, but you got nothing. You ain't earned nothing. And hey, Huey, I've got a major bulletin for you. Teresa, I don't want to see you anymore. What? Oh boy. I've realized that I have to go back to Janice and I'm, I'm really grateful for everything you've given me, really, but I've come to see it's Janice I need. Point the finger. You're breaking up with me? I've, I've come to see it's what I should do. I was telling Aldo. Don't talk to me about Aldo. You're breaking up with me? I was hoping you'd see it was the right thing. I feel all switched up. I never should have left Janice. I, I know that now. I, I should have figured out a way to work it out with her. I, I can feel my brain. Forget your brain. Point the finger. Are you okay? I know this is hard for you. I... I... What? Point! Your tooth! Huey, don't leave me. I'm going to the bathroom. There's no point in making this harder than it has to be. You're numb. What do you mean? You can't feel your own face. That woman made you numb. You're like somebody's thumb that got cut off. You're like a cut off thumb in a glass of water. I am not. Huey, are you talking about going back to Janice? Yeah. Huey, that woman hates you. Why would you go from a woman who loves you to a woman who hates you? It just don't make no sense. Uh, she doesn't really hate me. Yes, she does. She's just mad at me. It's worse than that, I swear to you. How could I be with a woman as long as I was with Janice if she hated me? I don't know. If that were true, how could I ever trust any woman ever again? Because all women hate her. I can't believe Janice hated me. If that were true, then I don't know anything at all, and there's no hope for me. I pray to God you're wrong, Teresa. I'm not wrong. Because if she really didn't love me ever, then I feel so ugly. Like I could, I could never, never be loved by anyone. If she really didn't love me at all, I think I'd, I think I'd end it. No. I'll have to. No. Why if I give my love to a woman who hates me? Come here. No. Why not? Because if you hug me, I may get confused and think that I love you when I already know what I have to do. Okay. I got to go back to Janice. That's... That's the only way out of this trap I'm in. You're not in no trap. Yes, I am. You're going to be all right. I don't know. You're just going through this hard time in your life. I hope so. Sure. But be quiet a minute and listen to something from me, okay? I need you. I'm not nuts like you are right now. I'm in my right mind, and I love you, and I need you, and I don't want you to leave me. Don't. I can't only be looking out for your feelings, sweetheart. I've got my own feelings to speak. I love you and I need you and I don't want you to leave me. If you get back with Janice, you'll be as sorry as a man can be. She don't love you and she don't mean you good like I do. I love you. I know you do. But I gotta go back to her. You don't, you know. I I'm saying I love you, but I'm like this little, little crippled man with stumps that can't grab nothing. I gotta go back to where I left my hands. Do you love Janice? I've got to get her back. You don't, you know. And get out of here. Teresa. No! Get out, I said. You can't have it always. Let's see what happens next. He ain't gonna wait for you while you're out there being stupid, you know. I know. You don't know nothing. Go on. Go. All clear? Oh, shut up. I know. It's bad. He is crazy. He is, isn't he? He is very crazy. Why can't he see that he's being stupid? There's probably somewhere in him where he can. Men are different than women. Men can get all wrapped up in the past. Women are more that way about the future. Oh, God, I feel bad. Yeah. Do you yeah. think Janice will take him back? I don't know. I hope not. Why didn't you break up with him like you were gonna? I started to. But you backed off. So what? You really love him? 
Yeah, the best of my knowledge. I loved a man like that once. Three years. Precious times. I'll never have the courage to be that stupid again. What happened? I dropped him. Just like that? I dropped him so hard, he was out of sight and gone before I could wash my hands. How'd you bring yourself to do it? I didn't have to do nothing. The hand on my watch did it all. Time. I got older by a day. One certain day. I got one day older than him. I feel older than Huey right now, but that don't make me let him go. Well, you are not me, as I said. What happened to me is not going to be what happens to you. But I do wonder why I've been through all the things I've been through. If all this stuff I remember is wisdom or just blinked. Anything you need me to do for you? I can't think of anything. Neither can I. I never can. There is never anything to do. Makes me feel as useless as I am. You're not useless. I'm glad you're here. Is Huey here? He left. Has he been talking to you, Teresa? Yeah. yeah sorry to butt in, but uh, somehow I'm already involved. Did he break up with you? Yeah, he did. I'm sorry. He's insane. So he's insane. So what? You want a cup of soup? Yeah, hey, sure. You know, uh, everyone in this neighborhood thinks you're like, Totally terrific. That's great. You know, uh, I do too. Thanks. Are you asking me out for a date? Uh, no. That's good, because the answer would have been no. Why do all the women with Huey hate me? I can only speak for myself. That's fair enough. It's because I don't like Mama's voice. I think it's because you know I won't marry. Same difference. You're getting me angry now. I can feel the pulse in my nose. Sorry. Look, I'm here on a serious matter. What? Huey is planning to go back to Janice. He told me. And I'm supposed to go set up for him. What? What's that mean? You know, soften her up. Take the initial heat. So he can reason with her. Well, you know how to make yourself useful. I should probably take lessons from you. What do you mean? I was just telling Teresa that I never know how to make myself of use in these situations. Oh, you want to be of use, huh? Let me tell you something. You can be used or you can be of use. To be of use may actually mean not allowing yourself to be used. I don't get you. Don't feel bad. I'm deep. Teresa, we need to talk. He wants you to talk to Janice. Yes. Huey's my best friend and he's not himself. And he's in a bad way. He's planning to do the most disastrous thing he could do with his life. And he's got me helping him do it. I think he should be with you, not Jens. What do you think? I agree. So I intend to make sure that Huey and Janice do not reconcile. How are you going to do that? I am going to go to Janice tonight. And I am going to seduce her. <laughs> oh, I like you. You're crazy. I am pretty crazy. You're going to put the make on Janice. That's right. I am going to make her mine. I'm going to drive any image of Huey from her thoughts. In this way, I will save my friend. And then what? What do you mean? I mean, if you make Janice yours, then she's yours, right? can't deal with that problem right now. You know, even if you prevent him from going back with Janice, don't think that things that with, between him and me are going to be all right. I got pride, you know, and a shitload of other stuff, too. Look, I can't deal with that problem right now, either. Look, all that will become clear, but one step at a time, all right? Janice, look, what I have tonight is like a military objective. Janice is like a hill I got to take. And I got till 12 midnight to do it. Whatever happens, Aldo, you're a good friend. You're a real good friend, and I admire you. When the smoke clears, you and I are going to have to have a talk. Let me tell you something. I am terrified. My stomach is against this. 
Janice is a very frightening woman, and if it wasn't for Huey, I would never even consider this. Not even if I was very drunk. This is a black rendezvous. All I ask of you, Teresa, is to keep an open mind. That's all I promise. That's all I ask. And if you never see me again, and they ask why I went, tell them I went to a tough place for the sake of a friend. You know, that guy is another example of why I should become a nun. Oh, <laughs> sweet. But him and Janice tonight, <laughs> what I wouldn't give to be a fly on that wall. What for? Janice! Hey, Janice! Janice! It's Aldo! Skolicki! You're the one in my backyard! Well, uh, I rang the bell about 50 times, but nobody answered. Broken. You should have it fixed. Why? So it rings. Why do I care if it rings? I don't see nobody. Well, still might get a delivery or some, a package or some, flowers or some. Somebody send you flowers? Yes. Very nice. What's that from Huey? How'd you know that? No. Well then, you shouldn't be so confident. I sent you the flowers. You? Why would you send me flowers? I sent them for Huey. I can't even manage to send his own flowers. What do you mean? He's hapless. He's a buffoon. He's my best friend. That's no problem. Anyway, it's a shame you destroyed him like this. I'm dead anyways. They may be dead, but they were not cheap. Besides, they're not really destroyed. Why are you here? Beautiful night. Yeah, I wish it would, I wish it would rain. Beautiful stars. Stars? Make me think of death. I can practically smell the greenness of the leaves. It smells like a cemetery. What are you doing here? Look, Huey asked me to come. Why are you saying this? Where's Huey? Oh, why? He's, he wants to patch it up with you. Patch up what? You know, the marriage. <laughs> What's so funny? Think about it. You want to come down here? No. Oh, Janice, Janice, Janice. Why do you keep saying that? You've seen some stuff, huh? What are you talking about? Like, remember when we was kids? I'd play Julius Caesar and you'd uh, stab me with a rubber knife and yell, Die! Die! Yeah, I remember. <laughs> you were some nutty little girl, you. And you were a jerk. I was very innocent. You were a jerk. I was a kid. I was supposed to be a jerk. Oh, you did it perfectly. Oh, Janice, Janice, Janice. What? We've been around the block a few times. Aldo, you are still the same hammer-headed clown you always were. Are you trying to be smooth? You come here out of no place. You send flowers. You say, Janice, 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 Janice. Am I supposed to be getting the idea? How about spitting it out? Look, Huey wants to make it up with you. Why are you saying this? Where's Huey? He sent me first. Oh my goodness, he always was a coward. Huey is not a coward. He was always a coward and you were always a stooge. If he wasn't a coward, he'd be standing here in his own shoes, speaking his own words. And if you weren't some stooge, you wouldn't be standing in the middle of somebody else's love scene. Ain't you got no girl of your own? Oh, please, I got girls coming out of my ears. What a picture. Look, I didn't come here to talk about me. That's because you're a stooge. Stop calling me that. Stooge. You know, you can be a very difficult woman to talk to, Janice. Really? Yes. I mean, if I was here on my own, if, if I was this specific guy trying to romance you, I, I got to tell you, I wouldn't even know where to begin. You're so nasty. I am? Yeah. You're, you're like a fiend. Your, your eyes, they, they look like vampire, vulture, monster, fiend eyes. They do? Yes, they do. And, and you always smile for the most wrong, most horriblest reason. No, sometimes when you smile, I expect to see a fang fall down on your lower lip. 
No, I've had the experience when you smile when I wanted to run away down the street because I was afraid you was going to bite me. Really? You're not angry? Why would I be? I don't know. I just figured since I was uh, telling the truth that it might be a little insulting. I'm not insulted. Well, good. Because it feels good for me to tell the truth for once in a while. No, I expected to have a lot of lying to do tonight, Janice. Why? You know. No, I don't. You know, romance, lies. Well, I like the truth. So do I. You don't know me, Aldo. Guess not. You have always amazed me. Why did you let me stab you and burger you and treat you like a dog? I don't know. You ought to think about these things. I just thought about it. I don't know. Well, I did all those things because I wanted to see how much you'd take. I thought maybe if I kick him one more time, he'll, uh, he'll, he'll stand up and uh, take my shoes away. Take your shoes? Why would I want to take your shoes? Talk to me like a man. What, what are you saying? I still don't get it, do you? I was flirting with you. Oh. That was flirting? Sure. No, 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 no. That was not flirting. Look. You may have felt flirting, but you weren't doing flirting. You was treating me like I was a snake in the apple tree. You just didn't get it. I would have gotten it if you did well, it right. I don't know what I gotten it if you weren't so stupid. All right. Anyway, thanks. For what? For feeling like flirting with me, even if I didn't get it. No, I want to apologize for what I said before. I, I don't think you're nasty. I am, though. No, but you're not this monster I made you out to be, you know? You don't have evil eyes. You don't have big teeth. You're not gonna bite me. Oh, I might, I might. Listen, gents, I think you're okay, you know? You've had your problems just like the rest of us and who am I to pass judgment on you? Look, under everything, you and I go back to the very beginning and I'm gonna have, I'm always gonna have a soft spot for you. The final ultimate drift is, I know you're a nice person, and I'm going to make a real effort to remember that from now on. Don't bother my account. I am, though. It, it's like this, okay? I was very titillated that you was flirting with me, you know, uh, even in those ancient days. Have you ever felt that since? <laughs> Never. Mm -mm. Certainly, you must have your romantic fantasies, what? living alone and all. Like you're that princess trapped in that castle surrounded by thorny bushes, waiting for your Prince Valiant to happen by. You must have thoughts like that, on occasion at least. Never. Mm -mm. Look, the thought of you has crossed my mind from time to time in an unterrifying way. I have a fantasy life too, you know. Do you? Oh, yes. Oh. I have a very real and active fantasy life. From time to time, you appear there. Aldo, are you hitting on me? Maybe. That's too delicious. What do you mean? It's supposed to be here for Huey. So? Maybe I'm not the stooge you thought. Maybe I got my own agenda of feelings, Janice. Look. I'm going to be out there with you. You've been on my mind lately. The, the thought of your face and, and your figure, it's just been eating me up lately. So how about it? About what? How about I uh, come upstairs and we rip up the bed a little? Oh, just like that. That's right. Impulsive. All right, what the hell? Really? Yeah, you know what? I'll come down and I'll open the door. That was easy. Hey, Aldo. Holy moly! Ow! Oh, I thought I burnt my finger. What are you taking me for, you comical boob? Am I not supposed to see right through you? You're like cellophane. Let's rip up the bed a little. God! Don't shoot me! Can't! My gun broke! You shot a gun at me.
Don't be obvious. You tried to kill me. I burnt my finger. That's what I get for using a zip gun. Next time it's Smith and Wesson, I swear to God. Dennis, do you understand what you just did? You committed attempted murder at me. He's aiming for your kneecaps. <laughs> I should come up there and give you a spanking. Oh, yeah, try it. I'll cut your heart out. Never mind. Look, Janice, I got to ask you a real question. Why have you always shown this desire to want me dead? Because you have never taken me seriously. Oh, please. I take you dead seriously. Why are you here tonight? You come here to talk to me about my marriage? You don't want to talk to me. Even when you come to talk to me about my marriage, even then you don't want to talk to me. You just want me to do what you want. You have always been this way. It has always been this way. But hey, no, no, you want what you want. Lie down, go to sleep. Love me, don't love me. Marry me, divorce me, take me back. No, I have no patience for the stupid, arrogant man pride. You come here when you want something from me. You make your faces and your noises and you think I'm what? A fool with hot soap? Listen, Janice, I don't understand you. I don't understand what you're talking about. Now, I'm gonna make you understand why I don't understand you. See, when we was little kids, you was always playing at murdering me and watching me be dead. Is that true? Yes. Now, at that time, Janice, I had not started to do anything to you. I'm talking very young here. At that time, no matter what happened, no matter what, what happened later, no matter how I might have screwed up tonight, at that time, I was perfectly willing to talk with you. I was not a man yet. I was just a little boy. You were always a man. No, I was not. I was a little boy who knew nothing and meant no harm. And this little boy, you was always stabbing at with a rubber knife. So what I have to say to you, Janice, is this. You have always been violent and had dark thoughts, and you have always wanted to kill and maim men. And that is not the man's fault. Do you understand? That is not my fault. When we was little kids and we had nothing to do, I wanted to play house. I did not want to play dead. I did not want to lie down in a flower box, make believe I was dead, so you could wear your little party hat and be happy. Do you know why I went ahead and played that game with you, Janice? I did it because I wanted to give you a little pleasure. Now, that's right. I mean, you may call that weakness or being a stooge or a fool, and I don't care because I know exactly what that was. I was being a human being for you. On day one, I cared about you, and I acted like I cared about you by being a human being with you. I cared about me. I cared about you, and I acted like I cared about you. And you, what do you think? You was flirting or what? You have always shown this hatred or violence towards me from day one. And you never let up. Not from that day to this. We're talking a long time, our, our whole lives. Can you blame me after years of being treated like a germ by you that I stand back, only deal with you when I have to and try to get what I want in a scram? I am not a fool. I am not a stooge. I am not going to be affected by your mad attitude towards men into thinking that I owe you something or I wronged you or I should be some other way because of your ancient pain. What even was it, Janice? We both know who it had to be. I mean, I didn't know the man, but uh, it was your father, right? Or your grandfather? Or your uncle? It was your father, right? Yes. Well, I can sympathize, but it's not my fault, all right? What did he do to you? Nothing. Come on, don't give me that. What did he do to you? He didn't love me. I'm sorry. Honest to God, I'm, I'm sorry. That's, that's horrible. But get over it. Me and my father never really had love either. He's dead now. Mine too. So our fathers are dead. We can't go on trying to make our fathers love us or fighting our fathers or trying to kill our fathers. What's the point of killing a dead man? 
A dead man do not need killing, and a dead man ain't gonna love you at all. Look, I know you're crazy, and just me talking ain't gonna make you sane, but come on. You've been treating me like this all my life, and enough already. Look, I've been nuts too. I've been trying to be well too. So let's take this shitload, this weight of sorrow, these sandbags on our necks from a million years ago, and just, just try to talk to each other about now. <laughs> you can't kill me, Janice. You've been trying your whole life, and I just won't die. <laughs> Even when you fire a gun at me, it explodes in your hand. Look, even if I die, I'll still be bouncing around inside your head. You know, this distance you offer me, this distance now, if we talk to each other, this could be the least distance there's ever been between us. It seems very far away to me. Look, there's something I've wanted to say to you for a while, but, but I never got the chance. I'm sorry your marriage broke up. Thanks. I'm a... Sorry I tried to shoot you. Eh, forget it. I think I'm losing my mind in this house. Maybe you should move. I can feel this, this sadness between us. It's almost like a rope. I don't know if I can dog this one out. What do you mean? Nothing, no, never mind, it's nothing. It's Come fine. on, tell me, what's the difference? Do you suffer from being single? Well, uh, sometimes. Yes. Makes me feel like I'm dying. No, go on, get out of here. I don't need this. What for? Flowers? Sending me flowers. They hurt. I threw them down. You think they didn't feel like flames in my arms? God, I feel like I'm tied hands and foot. Why are you being nice to me and opening the door just for your own intention? It's not me you want, but something. What? I'm embarrassed to say. Look, I, I just wanted to neutralize you so you wouldn't take Huey back. I see. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. I like the truth. I can recognize that as the truth. It don't make any difference. I can't be different than the way I am, and I am my castle of thorns. Look, you want to come down here? No, if I come down there, I'll hate you again. Look, Janice, I've changed my mind about you. You know, I'm I'm not just talking to you to get what I want. You know, I I want to be your friend. It. Why? I got no attachment to connect. Look. Huey wants to get back with you. No, he doesn't. He's just going through a crazy time. Yeah, maybe. Should have never married Huey. Why did you do it? I don't remember. Come on. <laughs> don't give me that. Isn't that weird? I really don't remember. I remember walking down the aisle, and I remember him, I remember looking over at him and seeing him there and thinking that he looked like a waiter. <laughs> Very romantic. And I remember going on the honeymoon and him looking at me and, and knowing he wasn't seeing me because because if he really saw me, why would he go on? You're a good looking woman. Trouble with the marriage. After a while, it started to make me mad he wasn't seeing me. So I started to do things to make him see me. You know, like when you pinch somebody to wake him up, I slapped his face. I gave him bad food to eat. I yelled at him. Sometimes, sometimes I locked him out of the bedroom, but still he wouldn't open his eyes. He wouldn't look at me the way I really was. It drove me crazy. You can't understand. So I shot his dog. He loved his dog. And I knew that. And I killed the dog. And he came home. He saw what I had done. And he looked at me. And there it was. His eyes. He saw me. He saw me. I mean, it was a bad time, but I was relieved that at last this lie had been taken away. He looked at me like this for three days. I mean, it was a bad time, not like before what other people would have called happy, but a truthful time. And I like the truth. But uh, it didn't last. On the fourth day, he began to look at me the old way again. And, and that was the day that I uh, shot the gun at him. 
So I shot the gun at him, but it blew up. He left me though, that, uh, that at least made him wake up enough to leave me. <laughs> um, Huey is gonna be here soon. You mean tonight? He's coming to reconcile with you. I don't want to see him tonight. Well, he's coming. Stop him. Tell him to come tomorrow. Coming tonight. That's the story. Do you want him back? No. Why? We should have never been together. Well, I wouldn't know about that. I, I mean, I only saw it from the outside. I married him because he asked me. Well, why'd he ask you? I don't know. I think he uh, just said some things and then... He couldn't think of anything else to say, so he uh, asked me to marry him. I don't know. Maybe I'm living in a fool's paradise, but if there's nothing left to say, it don't strike me as the perfect time to pop the question. You were young. Yeah, it's amazing how much that covers. But uh, if there was never nothing between you two at all, how did the marriage last for so long? I wouldn't say there was nothing. I'm uh, glad you said that. Huey! I tried the bell about a hundred times. It's broken. It's broken. Yeah. Well, uh, this is okay. It's a nice night. Hi, Janice. Hello. Uh, you, you and Aldo been talking? Yeah, we had a talk. She did try to kill me, like I predicted, but uh, everything is okay now. She did? What are you whispering about? I was thanking Aldo and sending him home. Yeah. yeah. You sure? Yeah, it, it, it's like you said. In the end, this is my show, right? Right. Right. You know, I uh, had a whole plan about how this night was going to go, but it is turning out to be a completely different thing. Good night, Janice. Well, you know, you could stay if you want. No, no, no. Look, this is between you and Huey. I mean, ultimately, you got to you got to do what you think is right. I should not be here. But I want to say one thing to you, Janice. I don't usually say this type of thing, but just know that it comes from a place of goodness. You should see a therapist. For Christ's sakes, let the dead bury the dead. Well, here we are. Yeah. Oh, remember this? No. You gave me this. Our first Christmas? Remember. Okay. Uh, you look good. You dress funny. Yeah, but what are these clothes? These are like a, like a failed thing I did to, to buck myself up. I got all these items about myself, like these clothes. Ideas I had that, that never came to nothing lying in my head like balls of dust. I, a lot of ways I started to go that I never went because I didn't have enough of a base. It's like you have to have a certain amount of power worked up to go all the way down the road. And I've never gotten together that much power. I mean, lately, I mean, since the divorce. I've been feeling real bad since the divorce. Have you felt bad? Yeah. I'm sorry. It's amazing to me how weak I am since the divorce. You were always weak. Was I? I don't even remember. How was I weak? You let me abuse you. Then help yourself. For what? Maybe you're right, but my feeling about that is that I love you, and so I put up with the stuff. You didn't love me. Oh, now, wait a minute. Now I'm on firm ground. I did, too, love you. But deluded. I loved you. You needed me. There's a difference. I loved you. I didn't need the abuse, I swear to God. I didn't need your lousy meals. I didn't need your cold looks. I didn't need your screaming fits. I didn't need sleeping on the couch. I didn't need any of that on my mother's grave. I loved you and I felt for you, so I put up with that. And I want you back. I don't want that nonsense back. I want you back. What for? I only want to tell the truth. And I can't think of nothing. I'm, I'm a little upset. Why are you here? I want you back. No. I want to get remarried. Maybe have a baby. Well, you don't know what you're saying. I made mistakes in the way I treated you. I know that now. I, I, we could we could get new furniture, go on vacation someplace warm. I, I could love you more than I did, be nicer to you than I was. I, I could cook the meals. I got a lot of love in me. I could love you even more than I did, Janice. And I, I'm telling you the truth. I could just I could just turn it on 
<laughs> like a bright, bright sunlight, and it can keep you warm even when you're an old grandmother. You have got to believe me. You've got to listen to me and hear what I'm saying to you now. All the time we spent together, I tried to say this one thing to you a thousand different ways, and no matter how I said it, you didn't understand. We broke up, but I don't think you ever really heard me. I'm offering you my heart and my faith for life. I was, I am. I feel like even now you're not hearing me and you you've just got to finally janice i could love you no yes i don't want it what i don't want your love you still don't believe me no i believe you but i don't want it what you have never understood me then tell me you're so wrapped up in your ideas about how things should be that you never really looked at me i have to no go home no shut up what you heard me I have totally looked at you. How how dare you? I reject that. I mean, really. You know what's the matter with you, Janice? You have never respected meekness as a virtue, and it is a virtue. I just said, shut up to you. I don't even like to do that. That's not me. I've looked right at you. I've seen you for what you really are, and I've loved you. Like, like the dawn comes up and loves the earth, the whole earth. <laughs> now, you may not like to hear that. You may have your own ideas about things, but I've got a point of view, too. You're not so smart that your life's like it is. You're alone. And people don't like you. When a man comes to you because he does like you, you treat him like a stupid bum. I have nothing to talk about. I reject that. We do too have things to talk about, Miss High and Mighty. You shot my dog. I'm not sorry. It was the wrong thing to do. The warning. Who killed a stupid, lovable animal all he wanted was love to be patted on the head taken for a walk sit next to you and do nothing what did he know when he looked at you with those eyes how could you hurt him i had to kill you why ain't you mad about that that's a good question i don't know maybe because i was flattered you took it as a compliment at least you made a fuss over me i was pretty stuffed for anything by that time <laughs> yeah it is it was, it was pathetic. I was pathetic, but what you need to hear, baby, is that you were pathetic. Oh, I know about me. Oh, you don't know the first thing about it. Every time I've ever tried to tell you something about yourself, you snap shut like a clam. You're beautiful, do you hear me? You are intelligent, capiche? You are a classy, sensitive, sexy woman, and I loved you, and I married you because I was smart, not because I was stupid, get it? No, I did not marry a nasty bitch who hated me. You did. <laughs> no, I didn't. Come down here. No. Whatever things might have become, however things might have gone wrong, or not worked out, please don't take away from me that I loved you, that I married you, that, 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 that to look at you and be with you was the pleasure of my life. If I have to go back to the beginning right or wrong and win you again and marry you again and love you deeply, deeply all over again to dig up what is stolen and mine and true, I am willing. I'm telling you to come down here. I come down there, you'll kiss me. Maybe. Well, I don't want you to. If you don't come down, I'll stand here forever till I'm dead. You come down here, leave, leave your knives and your guns up there and come down here to me. Why did you come here? I don't know everything. Hi. Hi. Where's Teresa? Gone. Gone? Uh, where's she gone? Canada. What do you mean? She had a bad night, and she got up and went to Canada. She promised me she'd keep an open mind. She has an open mind, and she took her open mind to Canada. She's got a cousin there she's going to stay with. For how long? She didn't say. Did she leave any word? Oh, you mean like a note or something? Yeah. No. <sighs> Astonishing. I feel like I jumped through hoops of fire, and for what? Nobody has any sense of place but me. You think Teresa should have done something different? Yeah, I think she should have done something different. Doesn't she have any sense of timing? Any hunger or curiosity about how last night went? How did it go? I don't know. That is, I know my part of it, but I had to leave before the end. So what, is you telling me that 
Teresa left Huey. But Teresa didn't leave Huey. Huey left Teresa. That's it. Stick together. All you women do is stick together. You know, there was a time in our society when the woman stuck by the man until the ship went down and there was no more bubbles. But this man would have let us stick. She should have ignored him. He made her listen. She he, begged him not to go, but he went. And he explained to her that he was in mental trouble and had to go. And that was her signal to hold tight. Hold tight for what? Huey? He left. For today. For the clear light of day. For the conclusion to a drama that Huey had to act out for his sanity. She should have held out for the punchline and then made a move, good or bad. Did you make Janice yours last night? Ugh, no. Things went another way. Uh-huh. Janice is a certain kind of woman who is uh, very difficult to predict in advance. Oh, but Teresa, you knew, huh? Thought she was more reliable. Canada. Why are you wearing the apron? I'm filling in. Not the worst job I ever had. All the minestrone I can eat. I should eat minestrone. You want a bowl? No, I should eat minestrone. I should work in a garden, wear a straw hat like my grandfather, and never speak another English word again. What are you talking about? I am sick of being a man. You seem upset. Oh, I seem upset? I am upset. I talked to this girl last night. What a case. Could I help her? Maybe. Couldn't tell. I don't think so. Tried to strike up a little uh, romance with her. Her reaction was she tried to kill me. She did not. You see, this is what you do not realize, May. There are women out there, wild, troubled women that are trying to damage and kill the shit out of men. Men. Me. Men. When women like you try to talk to these men, you think they're overreacting and they're immature because they can't handle love problems. I'm telling you, it's the wild west out there. I know. You gotta be freaking, freaking wild Bill Hickok to function out there. I know. I know, you know everything and I'm talking to myself. I didn't say that. Jesus, you know, I am really having a nervous attack. What's the matter? I. I wonder if I'm ever going to get married. Oh, sure you are. I don't know. The women in this country, they're, they're like bombs. Well, the men are like bombs, too. Yeah, right. The men are like bombs, and the women are like bombs, and everybody's negotiating like it's the atomic talks. I'm telling you, little kids look like lawyers to me. No, there's, there's some kind of politics going on here, and love ain't politics, and it shouldn't be. Politics is make-believe and lies, and love shouldn't be. I'm traumatized. These women have got me traumatized. There's no honor between a man and a woman anymore. No, no trust of the words they say. No, no strength and courage of the vows. The vows. You, you make a pact with a woman these days, you're promising yourself to a country without a constitution. Although, you are talking too much. Maybe you're right. You get to shook up by getting involved in this thing with Huey. That is true. This whole thing has reminded you that you want to get married, but that you're afraid to get married. How did you know that? I'm a witch. Look, I'm afraid. Can you blame me? No. These women are crazy. They've gone crazy. Well, the men have gone crazy too. No, no, no. I ain't crazy. I'm nervous, but, but I ain't crazy. All right, sit down, man. Let me talk with you. It's time to talk. My hands are sweating. You poor thing. You mean well. I do, yes. Listen, women ain't trying to kill you. Janice took a gun, pointed it at me, and pulled the trigger. It's only stupid luck that I wasn't killed. Then it was Janice who tried to kill you. It wasn't the race of women that tried to kill you. Well, that's... That's what it felt like. I'm not trying to kill you. No. Does your mother want to kill you? <laughs> of course not. My mother loves me. No, uh, she happens to be the greatest woman in the world. 
I'm not just saying that because you're here. So I don't want to kill you. And your mother doesn't want to kill you. And Teresa didn't want to kill you either. No. It was Janice who wanted to kill you. Do you want to marry Janice? <laughs> what? I'm just asking. No. Then you don't have to be afraid that that woman who hates you and wants to kill you is going to be your wife. Well, it could happen. It, it could be somebody just like her that I just don't recognize. Huey made the mistake. I could too. Yeah, but Huey got married. You held out. I mean, there ain't no reason under the sun why you should marry such a woman. Oedipus didn't mean to marry his mother. Yet he did. That's true. But Oedipus really did have exceptionally bad luck. What is all this trouble, trouble, trouble? What do you mean? Life. Don't it just seem unnecessarily dangerous? Like, why can't I just get married, play with the kids, suck on my teeth, and then look out the window? Because marriage is trouble. But trouble ain't the worst thing. I mean, I married the man I loved. And I went through hell for it. And when things got better, he almost immediately died. And now I'm alone. What do you make of that? A mistake? A tragedy? No! It was the most excitement. I can feel my heart right behind my eyes when I say it. For the best in this life, you gotta pay big dollars. What are you afraid of anyway, Aldo? You're gonna get old. And things are gonna go wrong and right and wrong, and then you're gonna keel over and die. Anyone you want in the meanwhile is gonna be expensive in some way. There ain't no bargains in people. You get what you pay for, and the currency is trouble. I mean, you ain't no bargain. Any woman ends up with you who's got a man who's gonna compare her to his mother, and that's always a bitch. Don't you believe that some people are just a certain way? Yes, and you do your best to find someone who ain't going to bring you to a dead end. But what I'm saying is wrong and not my advice. My advice is give up your fear of women as a race. If some women is done bad by you, see it as them that did it. Write their names down in a book if you want. Glue the pictures next to their names and cross X's over their faces. And don't mistake them for all the other girls. Even then, I don't think that's my advice. I think you're going to have to forgive those specific women and throw away your book of fear. Yeah, you're going to have to open your heart and leave it open like it's your apartment and you just don't lock the door no matter how many times you get robbed. You're going to have to open your heart and forget your fear. And then what will happen is you'll fall in love and marry and your mama will become your second best girl. And it'll become whatever it will become because of the trouble you take between you. But in this moment, you are upset because you're in a situation. You wanna get married, but you are not ready to get married. I can't find the right girl. The right girl? There ain't no right girl. Or every fifth girl is the right girl. That ain't the issue. It's you. You are not ready to get married because you are not ready to fall in love. So what do I do? You don't have to do nothing. The clock will take care of it all. Time. But stop this scanness of women. It's silly. You can hold your own. I'll try. There he is. Huey, how's it going? Pretty good. Uh, can I get a glass of water? Sure. Stomach bothering you? Oh, up uh, here. Drink this. You look terrible. Gee, thanks. So, uh, what happened last night? Did you, uh, reconcile with Janice? Yeah. You did? Yeah. You and Janice getting remarried? Uh, no, no, we just, you know, uh, made peace. I thought you wanted her back. I got her back, kind of. Some of her, and me. What'd you get? I guess it was this idea of what was. 
yeah, last night she she gave me back what was. I feel strong again. Good. Thanks for helping me out, although. Yeah, no problem. But it was uh, very interesting. <laughs> I do love you, you know. Don't you lie to me. I'm not lying. Where's Teresa? Go on. Where'd she go? Canada. How long? Indefinitely. She wouldn't wait, huh? Nope. I think she should have waited. That's for uh, sure. I don't know. She took a lot of shit from me. Uh, well, I I'm going to go home. <laughs> wait, ain't you upset Teresa's gone? Uh, she's not gone. She just went somewhere. But ain't you upset? No. I guess it ain't hit me yet. It will. I mean, I meant, I thought since, you know, Janice is out, it might be Teresa. It is Teresa. And I'll get her wherever she is, whatever she's doing, I'll get her and I'll make her mine. Maybe you will. I will. You see, I, I got my strength back as a man to take. Um, see you later. What, you going to Canada? Not yet. I'm going to go home and be quiet for a few days. I've been in a nervous state for a long time. I, I deserve a rest. Well, what do you make of that? He seems so relaxed. Yeah. You think he's right? You think he'll get Teresa back? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he's crazy and he's going to go back to Janice. I don't know. He seemed better. Yeah. He seemed like a man who got his life back in the proper order. And then now... I guess, like, collecting himself. When he's true collecting himself, he is going to go claim Teresa. Now, whether or not Teresa is going to go along with being claimed like a package at the post office, I don't know. You know, uh, stranger things have happened, but uh, <laughs> that'll probably be a whole nother big story. And not the story I set out to tell. You see, the story I set out to tell was about Huey Maximilian Bonfiliano and me and what happened to him. And I've told it, and I'll tell it again and again. Other nights, other places. Till it's done with being told. Till I'm done telling it. But I also said, I told it to you with the purpose of teaching you some. So here is the lesson. In the end, you are dead. In the middle, you could love. In the beginning, you're taken care of. When a man goes to reconcile with his ex-wife, he goes to die because he is failing to live. He goes to love because she is where he left the ability. And he goes to be taken care of because he is sick a little too soon of being a man. If he succeeds in his quest, he comes back able to love. And this, this is the lesson that I have to teach you. The greatest, the only success is to be able to love. So he's sitting there now at his apartment, same place as the, start, as the start of the show. Same place as the start of the show, at least now I would like to believe, <laughs> no, I need to believe that he is reconciled with himself. So I got this girl away from me at PJ Clark's. Uh, she and I have a certain history, very stupid, full of trouble. No, I'm going to try not to worry that she might kill me later, but uh, we will see. We will see. Always the prince, never the king. Ain't that right, Ma? Yep, so far. Well, wish me luck. Janice, Janice, Janice. Really? God, I'm going to miss you. Well, when me and your donates go to Lord, well, when me and your donates go to Lord, look you fry, for a penalty, for a tapella, for a 